Birds are chirping, the sun is shining, it's spring, it's spring, it's March, all March long. We're talking spring cleaning. We're talking about uh, decluttering and cleaning out the things that are no longer serving us. So today we're going to clutter out, we're going to declutter, clear out all those questions you have in your brain about taking a sabbatical or about moving abroad that you just haven't had answered yet. We're going to clear those questions out so that we can start the spring with um, the possibilities and not the doubts and the fears, okay? So, hi, <laughs> I'm gonna go inside. I just wanted to come out because I didn't, I wanted you to hear the birds. Okay, thematic, it's a theme. <laughs> but they're not, they're not super chirpy today. Um, we, I'm in La Paz, Mexico still, and we're gonna, let me keep that open. I'm in La Paz, Mexico still, and we're gonna talk today about the, um, Questions that you have, Q and A. You'll know what a Q and A is. I'm gonna answer your questions. So if you're in the chat, say hi. Let's see. Let me open that up. If you're in watching replays, say hi in the replay. Y'all know how YouTube is. They will tell me that you're there. And um, we'll get going. So I I would like for you to just ask your questions. I don't have anything prepared today like I usually do. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Stephanie Perry. I'm a year-round house sitter, and I'm the creator of House Sitter School. I help black women take a sabbatical or move abroad on a budget. If that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when I post a new video. Welcome. All right. Good morning, Abba. Good morning, traveling sire, scryer, scryer. Good morning, Janella. All right. I think I should put my earphones in, though, because now now the birds are like making extra noises. Good morning, Kim. Don't be afraid to ask your questions. We are going to um, walk into the spring. With more um, confidence about this being a possibility for us, but it's hard to get that confidence if you still have net lingering, nagging questions. So ask your questions. Hi, Pearl. Hi, Jamila. Hi, Kathy. Good morning, Sheeta. <laughs> this gets put on the screen. Thank you so much. <laughs> that spray, that morning, that morning's, that sun right in your face gives you that amazing glow. Good morning. Uh, QT Pyre 18. Thank you. Q, I'm sorry. Good morning. I can't say, I can't figure out your name, but good morning. Good morning, L, X, N, C. Justice, Nicole, Brenda, Teresa, Servana. I'm glad y'all are here. Okay, GG. All right, so seriously, ask questions. I think that since I'm going to start with a question that I think people would have, um, but y'all, I'm not going to be able to predict what your actual questions are. Good morning, Mom. All right, um, so I think that a question that people would have, right, would be about leaving the job, right? Do you have, is, is there anybody who has fear about taking a sabbatical from their job and then coming back? Anybody have any fears about being able to leave and then get their job back? I just wrote down, so I wrote, I, did, I said I didn't write anything down, but I did write down the four fears that I had before I left on my sabbatical to get started. Oh, cutie pie. Thank you. Got it. Now that's exactly what it says. <laughs> um, there's like, like everything is weird today. I don't know. There's echoing and there's stuff. So if you have, okay. So, uh, so I had a small concern. I was a pharmacy technician when I quit my job in 2015 to travel for a year. Um, and I had a small concern that quitting my job would be a problem because I wouldn't be able to come back when I needed to come back. And all I did to alleviate that fear was do a job search, right? I went to some sites, I did some searches on how to, uh, on pharmacy tech jobs, and boom, um, I saw pharmacy tech jobs, right? And right away I was like, oh, no big deal, okay? So I was a certified pharmacy technician, I was army trained, and I was willing to work night shifts. And I did a quick search for jobs in my area. I saw a ton of jobs, including my own hospital. And I was like, oh, 
no problem. That fear was gone. That took that fear away from me. What I didn't realize was that it was going to take so long to get my job back. So I came back in September, like September 20 something. And I didn't start working until November 1st, or November like 6th. Um, new employee orientation was November 6th. And then I started working in the pharmacy on the 7th. And so I didn't get a paycheck until late November. That's something I did not anticipate. I forgot how long it was going to take to get going again. But getting a job was no big deal. My employer um, who re-interviewed me did not have any beef with me taking a year to travel, right? No beef, got my job back, no problem. So if anybody has that fear, then holler. <laughs> I have fear about leaving the job because I don't want to go back. <laughs> yeah, I get it, L. A lot don't. A lot don't. So I, I didn't actually go back to that job. I went to another job, a different hospital that was closer to my parents' house. And uh, I only stayed for 90 days, like literally 90 days. So, so, okay, okay, all right. Thank you very much for asking your questions. I'm gonna go through them. Um, I'm on a, a third party app called Ecamm Live, which is why you can see the comments, but um, it means that sometimes I just don't see the chat. I don't see all of the chat, I see most of the chat. Justine, oh, so Justine, I, I am not the person to ask tax questions. I do whatever TurboTax tells me. So, <laughs> so we need to get, so, so you, I think it was you, you and someone else have already asked me to get a tax expert. I am having a hard time finding a black woman tax expert for expats to come on the channel and talk to us. If you know someone or if y'all are, if one of you is that person, Email me, stephanie at vicarious.com. I can't find a black woman tax expert. And y'all know, uh, I've only had two non-black women on the channel and they were both men. <laughs> so, I don't know, I don't know. So, okay, so I do what TurboTax tells me. I personally have not taken um, the flight as a deduction, but I have used like the, the accommodation that I've paid for a portion of that is tax deduct deductible. But like I said, that's because TurboTax told me that. Uh, that's as close as I can get you. <laughs> uh, no, I have never f deducted a flight expense, uh, but yes, I have deducted accommodation expense. All right, how much to save? The way to figure out what it's gonna, I assume that you're talking about a sabbatical or maybe either one, either one. You need some money to do either one of these things. The th way to figure it out is figure out what it's gonna cost you where you're going, right? What are your expenses back home? Some people keep expenses back home. I did not, right? Some people still pay rent or pay, you know, something at home. I didn't even have a cell phone bill. I didn't even pay a cell phone bill. I just get a SIM card in every country that I'm going to. Uh, so you need to figure out what your expenses are where you're going, what your expenses are uh, back home, and I would say, I've heard people say, give yourself a six month runway of, of money. If you know that you can make money online doing something, then like three months of money, three months of runway is fine. That's to some people that's shockingly low. So maybe if that makes your chest tight, then maybe six months of income, okay? But I would say if, if, if I left today, like when I left, I had a year of money and I was gone for a year. Uh, but if, if you are leaving and you know that you, but I did not have a way to make money at that time. I wasn't doing VA work at the time. I didn't have a YouTube channel at the time. I wasn't doing house sitter school back then. So I had to have all of the money then to go. If you know that, but if you know that you can make money on the internet, which I now know, I have, I have a video about the 10 ways I've made money online. If you know that you can make money on the internet, you need less of a runway, right? If you're doing something like teaching English online, um, I did VA work, I did um, 10 and a half ways, I can't think of one more way. Oh, I did transcription work, which I don't recommend, right? I've done things, so I knew that if, now I know that if I need to make some money, I know how to make some money on the internet. And I don't have to be um, I don't have to have a big cushion of savings to be able to go somewhere. We have a toolkit called the Work From Anywhere Toolkit at exodussummit.com slash toolkit that has good info on the best um, 
sites that, that we would recommend for you to find work online, right? If you're looking for remote work, there's information in the Work From Anywhere Toolkit on finding remote work. There's information on getting um, a business, running your own business from abroad. Um, and our favorite research tools, okay, where you can find out the cost of living in another city, in another place. Uh, these tools are amazing. You can find out exactly what people are paying for anything <laughs> in another country. You can find out what an Airbnb is going to cost. You can find out what an apartment's going to cost if you're going to do an actual rental agreement, like actually rent a place. You can find out what a TV is going to cost you. You can find out what a kilogram of apples is going to cost you. Okay, in the toolkit, we have our favorite resources, Numbio, Nomad List, and the earth awaits, okay? So all of those resources are listed in the toolkit. So how much to save, start with how much you need and then decide how much runway you want and how, and how much of this you need to have up front, and how much of this you can make as you go. Good morning, friends. Okay, I, okay, good morning, good morning. Thank you all for saying good morning. I'm just gonna scroll through the questions. How do I handle mail from the States? Good question, Kim. I've done two different things. First, I paid for a mailbox, a virtual mailbox. There are virtual mailboxes where they will take your mail, scan your mail, and email you so you can actually see the scanned image. That for me was a waste of money because wasn't nobody sending me anything important. But I did use a virtual mailbox very briefly. Uh, and then I was just like, oh, mom and dad. <laughs> so now everything goes to their address. Uh, it's, next time I go home, I will set up an official PO box for me. Um, but I don't get any mail that I need to have a dedicated address for, right? Mostly it's just because for business stuff, for business stuff, you have to have a, a business address, a PO box. But for, as in terms of mail, it just turns out I didn't get any mail that I needed to pay for the virtual mailbox for. I think I paid 18 or $20 a month. I think it was $17.95 per month, I'm pretty sure. And, um... I didn't use it. <laughs> even when they would email me, it would I would just I wouldn't even bother to open it because the first few times it was just junk mail, and I'm like, oh, I forgot that was all the mail I got was junk mail. So I'm paying eighteen dollars a month just for them to scan my junk mail for me so I can read it. No thanks. But there are virtual mailboxes. You can look some up. There are people. Some people like a virtual mailbox in their own city. Some people don't care. The one I used was in Los Angeles. Right. All my mail went to that Los Angeles address didn't matter to me at all. I think I just went with the one that someone else had told me that they used. Hello, Tasha, Tasha's Financial Garden. Health insurance while traveling is my fear. Any recommendations on this? There are two types of health coverage or like health, health insurance that you'll need. All right. Or two, two, way, two, 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 ways, to hand, two ways to handle this together. First, you do need travel medical insurance, which will cover you in the event of medical evacuation, hospitalization, something major, okay? There is travel medical insurance that will cover you for medical evacuation so that you don't have to be um, on the hook for $100,000 if you need to be evacuated from one city to another or from one country to another. We just saw, uh, is it the Joe, Joe? Mm. The actress from the movie, I was going to say the actress from the movie, the actress just broke her leg somewhere and she had to be airlifted up and medically evacuated. Ashley Judd, right? She just had to be, right. That's $100,000 easy. So there is travel medical insurance, which covers you for this kind of thing and accidents, right? If you're going scuba diving or whatever, you know. I have an annual policy through World Nomads, okay? Um... If you get that work from anywhere toolkit, we list out several travel insurance options. Okay, so you need the medical the insurance for the big thing, big things, but you also just need to be able to be covered for regular care. Now, a lot of people will just cover that out of pocket because don't forget, Tasha, that a lot of the world has some sort of health care 
public health care for people in their country. So you can find out if you'll be eligible for health care in that country. If not, then even still, um, health coverage can be very cheap. I, co I contracted leishmaniasis in the Philippines. It's disgusting. Don't Google it, okay? I, got, I went to a beach that was infected with some in infested with sand flies that bit me, and I got like eight or nine infected open sores on my legs, which were like the size of a quarter. Nickel, a nickel to a quarter. And I went to the hospital, a private hospital. I went to the emergency room. They treated me. The doctor treated me. They gave me prescriptions and sent me on my way. That entire bill was $34, right? So in a lot of the world, healthcare is not a big, heavy burden. Here in Mexico, plenty of people play, pay for plenty of healthcare just out of pocket, okay? So you probably will be paying for a lot of your healthcare out of pocket. So I said two, but there are three. So a lot of your stuff, you'll just be paying for out of pocket because it's not like in the US. Ambulance rides in a lot of the world is free, right? <laughs> so a lot of stuff you're not gonna be paying for, um, you're, you're gonna pay for out of pocket. The big stuff you're gonna have insurance for, travel medical insurance for. And then the other stuff in the middle, um, you can see if you are eligible for healthcare on their public health system. Um, like, I think they still do this in Panama. When you fly into Panama as a tourist, you sign some something and you are now a part of the Panama public health system and you can be treated in Panama on, on their system. Um, I don't have a list, so that would be a good thing to, for me to get together one day, get a list of countries where you're eligible for their health care, their health insurance, right? In Panama, when you fly in on, as a tourist, you get public health insurance. But even without public health insurance, remember, it can be very inexpensive in most of the world. In the U.S., health care is, is punitively expensive. Like, it's so expensive that you are punished for getting health care, for getting treatment. In Mexico, you walk into the doctor, you get seen, you pay out of pocket, everything is good. I hope that answered your questions. But get the toolkit, get the Work From Anywhere toolkit. We list out some insurance um, options. World Nomads, uh, Seek Safety Wing, Alliance. Yeah, there's some options in there. Um, Tosh told us last week about, Tosh taught us last week about decluttering and Justice is saying, uh, we're, we're cleaning everything out of her life. Tosh said she forgot in the video, she forgot to tell us to take before pictures. So if you're doing some spring cleaning, take some before pictures um, because you wanna, you wanna be able to track your progress and, and celebrate your progress. She said she specifically forgot to tell us about that. She also made for us a decluttering toolkit, which is amazing, and some of y'all have already downloaded it. She downloaded a really awesome de free decluttering starter kit. I mean to say, starter kit from Tosh. So get your starter kit and get your decluttering on. Toshpatterson.com slash declutter kit. All right. All right. Okay. All right. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. <laughs> Tanisha says she finally caught us live. Welcome, Tanisha. That's why I always say turn on notifications. My friend Katrina, I don't know if she's here. My friend Katrina is like, oh, I missed it. I'm like, I told y'all, turn on notifications. <laughs> yes. Abba says, oh, so you're already getting started. Good, 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 good. I, I don't know. that When she started talking about um, digital clutter, oh, my chest just got tight. <laughs> I got to get started, but Lordy do. <laughs> Medicine Woman Curry, I want to move to Ghana or West Africa. Any hookups? So in the Exodus Summit, okay, so go to, okay, go to exodussummit.com. Exodussummit.com. Okay, go to exodussummit.com. We have a session on life and travel in Africa in general, right? Uh, but we talk about Ghana in that session, and then we have an, a session that you can upgrade to, a group coaching session run by Kristen Tellis Quay from Certified Africa. She did an upgraded session that you can pay to, to, to watch on Ghana 
and on buying property in Ghana and or starting a business in Ghana, okay? So ExodusSummit.com is where you can go to watch the session on life, like living and traveling in Africa, like all of Africa. We covered South Africa, West Africa, East Africa, not too much. We didn't talk about North Africa, like Morocco and stuff. But that session is there. And then Kristen's um, advanced session on like Ghana on property buying and business opening in Ghana, like business opportunities in Ghana, you can get that in the Exodus Expat Workshop, which is here, okay? So I'm saying, I'm telling you about two separate links, okay? This one is specific to Ghana, Exodus Expat Workshops. One of those workshops is specifically about opportunities in Ghana, all right? I haven't been to Ghana, maybe uh, Tiffany from tiffany-travels.com, right? tiffany-travels.com runs does a lot of stuff, talk about Ghana. She has videos on her YouTube channel about Ghana, which her YouTube channel is actually Sweet Tiffies, I think. I don't know. No, it's not. No, it's not. YouTube.com slash, it should be Tiffany Heard, H-E-A-R-D. All right, so Tiffany's got Ghana travel info as well. I don't have Ghana travel info because I am a budget traveler. <laughs> if you can't get there on a budget and stay there on a budget, I haven't been there. So I don't have it, but these are places where you can go to get it. All right. Greetings, greetings. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. All right, cutie pie. I'm considering taking a sabbatical for three months to go to Lisbon good, but concerned about how to keep my position and tell HR I'm taking a break. Rashida says, get in that handbook. Get in your employee handbook and see what's there. You might be surprised that your employer offers a leave of absence for any reason. You might find that. Yeah, so you might find your employee will offer you a leave of absence where you can go do what you got to do and then come back to your job, okay? If um, that is not an option for you, then you'll need to figure out um, a, an approach to talk to your, like the person who you report to and frame it as a positive for both them and you, right? You're going to have to frame, I need this time off and here's how it's going to benefit the company as well as how it's going to benefit me, right? Human resources, HR works for them. H, <laughs> but your your direct the person who you report to directly may be a better person to get on your side than HR. Okay, HR is there to keep the corporation from getting sued. HR is not there to help you live your dreams, right? But the person you report you may have an advocate right there in the company, uh, but don't expect it to be HR. Yeah, so you you just need to frame the the pitch for your time off. As a, as, as a way that they will also benefit, whether it means that some new employees will get to be cross-trained and learn some new things, that they may view that as a benefit. Um, if you're gonna come back with fresh ideas and maybe some language skills, another language, they might view that as a benefit. You'll know what kind of, you, hopefully you know what kind of things that they're gonna take um, that what kind of things that they have a priority, what kind of things that they prioritize, right? They may very well say, oh, well, this is an opportunity for this person and this person to be cross-trained in this thing. They may view that as an, a positive. Um, yeah, I don't have good experience with this. Rashida is a career break coach, Sheeta Dow. Uh, she is, Sheeta's on the loose on YouTube. She's a career break coach who has more experience with this. Com slash. Okay, so Rashida has more you more experience with people who have a job that they want to return to. Okay, <laughs> that's not my specialty. I can help you quit the job, um, but if you want to get a leave of absence approved from them, you got to get in the handbook. Did you got to read like every page of that employee handbook? and see what your options are. And you've got to get an advocate there 
on your side. And that advocate is not human resources. Human resources is not there to help you. Human resources is there to help the corporation or the business, the company. Anyone else, if anyone in the chat has, um, so I'm really behind in the chat, so I can't see, but if anyone in the chat has experience with ne ne negotiating something like this with their employer, please share that information, okay? Please share that information. All I, what I know about it is that your, your, your supervisor, your, the person you report to, the director of your department or whatever, that person is probably a much better advocate for you than um, human resources. And surprisingly, there are people who view, will view this as a benefit, right, and who will be all in. Some people will never find that person, but some people have that person. Krista Boatman just talked about, was it Krista? She just talked about her employers were like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, okay, you're doing this. No, no, it wasn't Krista, because Krista's not coming back. I can't remember who it was, maybe Letitia. Yeah. But please, if anyone in the chat can give us more information on that, please share. This is not my specialty, y'all. I'm a quit, <laughs> quit that job person. So please, let's help our sister get her, uh, get her sabbatical and keep her job. Kathy had another mail question, FedEx and UPS. So here in Mexico, you can get stuff delivered, FedEx and UPS, um, but they usually, you usually get it delivered to like a um, place and you go pick it up, like the, a mail delivery place and you go pick it up. I don't know that they get FedEx and UPS to your actual doorstep, like in the US, but they are mail, like in, in Lake Chapala, there's a, you drive down the main road and there's a big old mailbox mail, Mail USA, or I don't know what it's called. I don't know. But you just go and you have your stuff delivered to them, and then you go pick it up there. Mail delivery in Mexico to your house is slow as molasses. Elle, Elle has a question. So we talked about health insurance. She also says, do I have enough money to flat out retire? You need to look at cost of living in some places. You need to find out what flat out retire means because a lot of retirees do have, do make some money, right? Do you have any source of income um, that you feel comfortable with, right? Do you have investment income? Do you have rental income? Do you have, you know, but you need to start with the cost of living in the place that you're considering going or some the places you're considering going. Start there because nothing, you can't figure anything out if you don't know that, right? The cost of living if you wanna to retire to Singapore is not the same as the cost of living if you wanna to retire to Cambodia. And so do I have enough to retire? Maybe you have enough to retire to Cambodia, but not Singapore. So figure those things out. Get in those cost of living calculators that are in the Work From Anywhere toolkit, exodusummit.com slash toolkit. Get in those calculators and find out what, um, how, much you, how much you need. <clears throat> All right. Savannah, my biggest fear is finding employment abroad. So I'm in the process of finding remote work. That's the way to go. Remote work is the way to go. Finding work abroad, I think, is a losing proposition. Um, unless you do, so unless you're like an international rights attorney or no, even that, I don't know. I don't know. I think that if you're going to a country because the cost of living is lower, when you get there, you're gonna find the jobs pay a lot lower. That's why the cost of living is so low. The pay is very low. The, the, the answer is to make US dollars or Australian dollars or Canadian dollars or whatever, or euros, and then live on pesos or live on South African rand or live on you know an inexpensive in currency. So I think remote work is the way to go. Remote work or starting at doing something online yeah, that's remote work. Remote work is the way to go. Okay, good vibes. All right, if you don't mind, can you find a way to connect us somehow? Even if she, if she doesn't, she may be able to answer expat questions. If not, she may know someone who can. Um, maybe, um, if you can, maybe email me her name. Would that be okay? Or email me like her, 
like, yeah, her name, she might, she's probably on LinkedIn or something. Um, all, my email is stephanie at vacarious.com. I'm also on LinkedIn, Stephanie Perry on LinkedIn. So if you could find some way to connect us, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, because even if, if she can probably answer our questions and even if she can't, she probably knows someone who can. All right. I'm scrolling y'all, I'm scrolling. I'm gonna get your questions. Thank you very much for asking your questions. I appreciate that. All right, all right, all right. We had, we got Kathy. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. <laughs> Christine, I started at 10 a.m. Eastern time. You're right on time. Okay, Makeda, I just started a remote job, but will be in Jamaica for a couple of months. My concern is consistent Wi-Fi connection hotspots when Wi-Fi is weak. That's a real concern, right? When people are like, how come you haven't been to this place? How come you haven't been to that place? Sometimes it's, I need consistently strong internet. <laughs> because I still need to make money. I still need to make money, even though I will tell you I'm retired sometimes. <laughs> and when people ask me what I do for a living, I say as little as possible. I do still need internet because I need to make money, and that is a concern. Um, so I would get in expat groups in Jamaica and find out what they, what kind of help they can give you about getting good Wi-Fi, right? How do you, because sometimes it's as simple as you can, if you if you're you're if you're in an Airbnb, maybe your Airbnb host can boost your internet, right? Can pay for a better package because you're there for three months or whatever. You know, like it might be that simple. You may need to get um, a hotspot. I or I don't know if it's called a hotspot. I have a Wi-Fi thing. <laughs> I've never used it. The orange Sky Roam. I have Sky Roam that is designed for specifically for people whose Wi-Fi is not strong, right? You, you don't have good Wi-Fi, but you do have good cell service. You use the cell service as a hotspot through Skyroam. Again, that's in the Work From Anywhere toolkit. The, um, yes, so that's a concern, but I would get in expat groups and find out what their, um, what their experiences are with internet in the place that you wanna go. What is their internet speed? They'll know. Somebody in that group will have tested their internet speed like that week. I would get in there and find out that information because that's a real concern. But it's hard to tell ahead of time. So in, in the Work From Anywhere toolkit, we have a link to Nomad List. I'm pretty sure the Nomad List link is in there. So Nomad List is a place where people self-report. So people have reported what their internet speed is in different places. Um, and I look at that before I go someplace. It's one of my priorities. All right, I'm gonna link to that toolkit again. I'm gonna link to it a thousand times. It's great information, okay? The questions, you might, the, as you can see, most of the questions that y'all have asked today, that information has been in the toolkit. Kim's mail question was, is not in the toolkit. That's something we're gonna need to add in there soon. But um, yeah, the question, the stuff, the resources that you need quite likely are in that toolkit already because they're the same questions that we had, right? Same questions that we had when we started planning uh, and, 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 go, and as we go along running businesses from abroad. Yeah, but I think I answered your, I think I gave you information. So get in a group um, and ask them for that city that you're going to. Like if you're going to Negril, find a group called Expats in Negril and ask them what the internet speed is like. Ask them if there are some places where you can work from. I don't know if during COVID, if co-working places are up and running or not, but some places will have co-working places with good, strong, reliable internet if you need to be able to work for so many hours per day. Um, so, and groups will be able to answer that for you. Hi, Teresa, how many how do I manage all my stuff as I move from place to place? How many bags? All right, I only travel with a carry-on bag and a backpack, very small. 
Um, but I haven't moved, like I don't stay anywhere for any particular amount of time. I house sit, I go from place to place, but I don't stick around too long. So I travel with just a carry-on bag and a backpack because I am cheap. I'm not paying baggage fees. I'm not doing it. Um, so I do that, but you can travel with more stuff, right? You can, you can, Adelia has actually moved from China to Mexico City with four, I believe four suitcases plus her dog. Um, so you decide what you need, what needs to go with you and what does not. Adelia lives in these places. She's not house sitting and bopping around and going, you know, she lives in Mexico City now. So she got there with four suitcases plus her dog. But you don't, um, I travel with a carry on bag and a backpack. At most, I usually have eight bottoms, right? That's how I measure it. Eight pants, skirts, dresses. That's what I do, right? Eight and then some tops, I just throw in some tops and probably max four pairs of shoes. I don't think I've ever traveled with more than four pairs of shoes. Uh, I have to walk dogs, so I, had, I always keep some raggedy sneakers, um, some cuter sneakers, some kind of sandal and some kind of flip-flop, you know, some kind of like dressier sandal and some kind of like everyday sandal flip-flop thing. Um, but sometimes people get stuck on the, the minimalism thing. You're gonna, be able to travel on less and less as you go. If eight bottoms sounds horribly awful to you, then take 12 or 15 outfits, right? Take 20 outfits and then just know that you're gonna pay for pay to check a bag and then know that as you go, you probably will start throwing some stuff out. You're gonna get tired of carrying stuff from place to place. If you're taking a sabbatical and you're going or you're doing some digital nomad time and you're going from country to country or city to city on a regular, you know, rotation, you're gonna get sick of that stuff. Don't take anything that you don't, anything bulky that you're not okay with throwing away, right? If you can't live without a particular jumpsuit, that jumpsuit is really bulky in your bag, know that you're gonna to have to be willing to throw it away. So don't take anything that you're not willing to throw away. I have thrown away a lot of stuff. Um, during my one year sabbatical in 2015, I probably got rid of almost half of my things during that time you know, as I went along. Because every time you have to go get on a bus or a plane, you gotta repack it and you're like, I'm not taking this to one more country. I had a maxi skirt, a really long, like bluish purple maxi skirt. I remember that was the first thing to go. I'm like, I am so sick of trying to fit this humongous skirt into this bag. Um, but I do, that's what I do. Eight, eight bottoms and some tops. And then I know that I can fit that in a carry-on plus a backpack. I use packing cubes to like, constrict my stuff so that it fits into a smaller space. Um, and then right now, I only have four. I only brought four bottoms. I came to Mexico and I was like, I don't need nothing. <laughs> I'm house sitting, I'm, a, I'm supposed to be writing a book. So I'm like, I'm not even, or I was, I came down to house sit and to write a book. And I'm like, I'm not doing fun stuff. We're on lockdown anyway. I have four bottoms, four pairs of pants. And they're not even like actual pants, one pair of pants, and three pairs of like sweatpants or yoga pants. Yeah. Kimmy. You can, okay, so you're, you may be able to get your own phone unlocked from your provider, right? They, your provider can unlock your phone based on their criteria. Okay, so the first, first time I did it, I just had, I think I was with AT&T or T-Mobile, I don't know. I just had them unlock my phone. Before I ended my service contract with them, I had them unlock my phone, and then I ended my service contract. Then I just bopped around. Every time I got to a new country, I just put in a new SIM card. But you can get an unlocked phone anywhere. I bought my most recent phone, which is a 7 Plus. That's how long, <laughs> that's how long ago it was. I bought my most recent phone on Amazon. Um, I'm pretty sure. I may have actually bought it from Apple. But I, 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 no, I don't know. But yeah, so you can get an unlock, unlock, unlocked cell phone anywhere and then just put your SIM card in as you go from country to country. Another option is to get a Google Fi SIM card, which is what I'm using right now, so that I don't have to change SIM cards every place I go and I don't have to change phone numbers every place I go. Every time you take, you know, you change SIM cards, you have a new phone number and then you like get locked out of your, like, I, if, I'm having a problem with, um, what do they call it? PayPal? And they're like, okay, we're gonna send this code to your phone 
but I've already changed SIM cards. I'm using a different phone. I can't get the code. I can't log into my PayPal account. So I stopped changing SIM cards every place and just got the Google Fi SIM card. There's a coupon for Google Fi in the Work From Anywhere toolkit. Y'all already know what I'm gonna say. Toolkit link is uh, exodussummit.com slash toolkit. So right now I use Google Fi. They work in a hundred and something countries and I don't have to worry about having a different phone number everywhere. But you can get the unlocked cell phone anywhere. Joyce says, what is the name of the group who want, of women who want to repatriate to Africa? I don't know. Anybody know? I don't know which group. So Blacks at Global is not women only. And that's not Africa only. Blacks at, I don't know, Joyce. I don't know, because repatriation to Africa is not my channel theme. <laughs> I want women to go where they want, and we're not, we're not focusing on only Africa. Absolutely not. I want you to go where you want and go where, like we just talked about, go where you can live your life. I don't know of too many places where, in Africa, where I can make money online with good, strong, inexpensive internet like I can here in Mexico. You know what I'm saying? So Africa is not on my radar until I know, until some of those bloggers and, and YouTubers start talking about their internet access, right? How much does it cost them? How, what is their internet speed? How long do they have internet access in the day because they're rolling blackouts? How, how long is this blackout every day? Repatriation to Africa is not on my to-do list. I worked, I, mm -mm, I was in South Africa for two, more than two months. I would never ever want to try to work from South Africa until they get their internet together. It was expensive and slow. It was like it was like having dial up. <laughs> it felt like it was 1994 all over again. I loved my time in South Africa, but most of the women on this channel still need to make some money. I talk a lot about making money. Most of the women here still need to make some money. And so repatriation to Africa is probably not conducive to that plan. Probably, not definitely. Okay, but likely, likely. If you need to make money on the internet, you're probably not gonna have Africa, countries in Africa at the top of your list. That's my opinion. I've only been to South Africa, so that's why I'm saying I need these people, these people who are telling us to go to Africa, I need them to tell us what is your internet speed? <laughs> How much do you pay for internet? What is your electricity bill? I have seen electricity bills in Mexico, $10 for two months. Mm -hmm. $10 electricity bill for two months and never had a blackout, right? I need some logistical help, information. Give me some information. Yes. Well, I, it's coming, Lisa. <laughs> Girl, it's coming. It's coming. I heard somebody said, somebody said May. It'll be open for any age group. And you know, in your state, they may have, what are they called? They may have like no waste appointments, right? Where you can make an appointment just at the end of the day. If they have vaccines that somebody didn't show up for their appointment and they don't want to flush that vaccine down the toilet, they will let people come and people who weren't didn't fit the criteria yet. So you can check out and see if you guys have no waste appointments in your area. Yeah. AJ, had I found you before, perhaps I would not have returned from the US. Yeah, a lot of us have left and come back and been like, mm -mm. <laughs> no, gotta find a way to make it permanent, make it sustainable. Yeah, we, that's what we wanna do, find ways to make it sustainable. Good morning, Kitty. Okay, I'm trying to get a virtual job so I can travel. Tell us what kind of work you do. Is it something that you can do remotely already? If not, you need to do a skills inventory. You need to get that toolkit, okay? Because the toolkit comes with some emails that are super helpful in getting you, um, uh, getting helping you find ideas, right? Find ideas for how to make this work for you, how to make it sustainable. Get that toolkit, exodussummit.com slash toolkit, because the emails that come are really helpful. Teaching English online, I just talked to, Rashida and I just talked to Kirsten Brown 
about teaching English online as her way to move abroad. Being a native English speaker is a commodity. Being a native English speaker can get you paid enough to live in a lot in some other parts of the world. I'm not talking about it can get you paid as in it can get you paid paid, but it can you can make enough money to live abroad by being a native English speaker and helping other people learn English. So watch our video on teaching English abroad with Kirsten Brown. I don't have that. Let's see. I don't know. You'll find it. You can go. You'll find it, <laughs> Kitty. Go. If if that sounds interesting to you, go to my channel, uh, the home my channel page, and you'll find that video very recently with Kirsten about teaching English online as a way to move abroad. Okay, Makeda, many thanks for the wealth of information. You're welcome. I'm telling you, it's good information in that toolkit. Okay. Uh huh. Therese, okay, so back. So I'm really far behind in the chat, but Teresa said, uh, "Thank God for travel health insurance." Yes, and a, a lot of places now aren't letting you come in because of COVID. They're taking a look at that you have to have travel health insurance before you go, right? So like my my World Nomads policy or Safety Wing or Alliance, you have to have a policy before you can even get there now for a lot of countries. All right, good, Kitty. Okay, <laughs> I'm behind in the chat, so I see now that you do have it. Yes, so the email, use those emails, right? Use those emails to help you find something, right? So one of the, I think the second day, the second email that you get after you download the toolkit is an inventory where you're gonna do, you're gonna do a skills inventory. You're gonna find what skills you have that can take you around the world. Mm -hmm. Hi, TS, I will be in Granada for the summer with my son, 11 year old son. Good, that's exciting. Any advice for finding youth activities for him in the country? Yes, find Facebook groups. I'm not kidding, find mom groups in Grenada, 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 right? Join mom Facebook groups, join expat Facebook groups, join, those are the only ones I can think of, right? Yes, those mom groups, they're uh, like, no, no matter what, <laughs> what like pocket, what little situation you are in, there is a Facebook group for these people. <laughs> Join the Facebook group. They are sharing good information. I know those mom groups have information on like sports and activities that he can get in on. Ask them. They're there because they like to share information. They're extremely helpful. I'm a, you all know, I'm a big proponent of Facebook groups. This is me. I don't know what that was. But yes, find Facebook groups for people who do the thing that you want to do. And then get in there and they will help you. They will help you. Yes, justice. Yes, same advice. Yes, they have no show lists. So you may not have to wait until your age group is eligible if you want to do that. And Lisa's also asking about vaccine passports. I think, I think it's a reality. I think that we are going to see countries saying, if you don't have this vaccine or the test, you can't come in. I don't know if it's gonna be only vaccine. I think it'll be vaccine or test, I think. Um, Cause we already see, like I can't go back home. I can't go back to the US until I get the test. Um, yeah, I think that's reality. Gotta, we're gonna have to roll with it. We're gonna have to find our way, you know, find a way to roll with it. Porcha, Porcha Sha. <laughs> what I think of traveling to the Middle East alone. A lot of my friends have done it. I haven't done it yet because I am a budget traveler. <laughs> the Middle East is not budget friendly, but yes, it's, it's enjoyable and doable. There are places that are better choices than others. Um, let's see. So if you go to exodussummit.com, we have a talk on the Middle East, right? It's going to make you want to go to Oman like tomorrow. Okay. Nicole Brewer lives in Oman. Um, Abu Dhabi was, mm, I, I can see her face in front of, okay. So we have a woman who was a school administrator in Abu Dhabi. Marlene, Marlene, Marlene Shane. 
Uh, so she talked about Abu Dhabi. Uh, Nicole talked about Oman. We talked about Turkey. Um, so yes, safe. If you live in your city, where, whatever city you live in, if you do things there alone, you can do things in the Middle East alone. Mm -hmm. There are parts, there are places that are going to be more harassy. <laughs> Some of the touristy parts of Egypt are going to be more harassy. They're gonna, people are going to harass you more than others. We just talked about that not too long ago um, uh, on a worst experiences video. But yes, safe, expensive, but safe. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm like, there are not too many places in the world where if you're from the United States, you're gonna be in more danger going there than you are at home in your own city. That's real, like that's real. So, so Middle East alone, yes. You're gonna have a ball. If you wanna to go to Dubai and party it up, well, I don't know what kind of partying people are doing now. COVID has changed everything. <laughs> but if you wanna to go to Oman and do the outdoor nature stuff or spas, I'm telling you, Nicole, Nicole, Nicole in Oman is a teacher. She teaches English in Oman. She is living her best life. Um, yes, and she, they travel, Marilyn, Nicole, they travel throughout the region solo. Loving it, yes. So my my, what do I think of it? My think I what I think is do it, <laughs> and take me with you. Okay, Abba says she signed up for the declutter toolkit. Good, thank you. Yes, Tosh, Tosh was super helpful last week. You guys put together two hundred twenty five dollars for her. So she appreciated that. And then she went and put together the starter kit, the declutter starter kit, toshpatterson.com slash starter kit. Okay, S. Hughes, I cleaned out my inbox after the live chat. I didn't do anything. <laughs> it just seems so hard. Let me see, my inbox right now, my phone is cracked, so I can't, I, uh, I have 10,000, so my screen is cracked, and I still haven't gone to get it fixed. 10,843 unopened emails. I just need Tosh to come and do it for me. <laughs> I just need her to come and do it for me. Hi, Alicia, any tips on buying, buying property in Mexico? I do know that if you're a permanent resident, you can buy property in Mexico, right? And in some places you can't, even if you're a resident there, you have to be a, a citizen or you have to be a native person, a citizen, I guess is the word. Uh, but in Mexico, if you are a permanent resident, you can buy property in Mexico um, with, some, with some exceptions. I'm pretty sure there are some beach exceptions, right? You can't buy, you can't buy a beach property if you're not a citizen but you are a resident. But yes, you can buy property in Mexico. I don't have any tips on buying property in Mexico, but I do have tips on getting citizenship. If you go to the, we, do, we did an expat workshop on getting citizenship in Mexico. Not, mm -mm. let me go back. We did a workshop on getting residency in Mexico, which is the first step to buying property in Mexico. All right, so that workshop is at exodussummit.com slash workshops. We did a workshop specifically on getting residency. Getting residency in Mexico is surprisingly straightforward. You need to hit the money requirement, right? It's all about the money. You need to hit the money requirement, get some documents together. It's a two-step process. You start it in the United States, or you're, you start it out of Mexico. I don't think you have to be in the US, but you start it outside of Mexico, and then you finish the process once you get into Mexico. Um, but as far as buying property, that's what I do know. You have, to, you have to be a permanent resident to buy property. You can't buy property just as a tourist. Vaccine hunters, okay. So yeah, okay, vaccine hunters is another place where you can find vaccine appointments. All right, is there anyone who knows bought property in France? I do not. Any tips for Portugal? Do you, Superfina, do you have a specific question about Portugal? Because I have a lot of tips for Portugal. Portugal is amazing. Um, the cost of living is great. The, like now, you know, it can be expensive, you know, 
depends on what you want, but you can do Portugal inexpensively. Food is great, weather is great, people are great. I'm a fan of Portugal, the internet speed is great. You can get a flight back to the US, a direct flight. I live in Delaware, it's easy to get a direct flight from Portugal to Philadelphia, to New York, to DC or Baltimore. Portugal ticks off all of the, and getting residency in Portugal, straightforward process as well. So it ticks off all of the boxes that I have. Um, but if you have a specific question, ask us. Ter Teresa, my video is later than the chat. Yes, it is. It depends on when you came in. Yes, child, it's, <laughs> it's okay. I, my chat is later than all of you. I am so far behind in the chat, so yes. It's, it's YouTube is, it YouTube do, it do what it do. <laughs> Tracy, congratulations. Tracy says retirement effective May 1st. Congratulations. That is amazing. I need to renew my passport. My plan is to leave for three or four month trips starting out in Guadalajara. That's great. Yeah. Renewing passports might be, there might still be a delay, but yeah, once you do, you're out of here. That's fantastic. Are you going to see more of Mexico? That's wonderful. Mel, <laughs> Mel's counting subscribers. Yeah, I think I'll hit 38,000 subscribers today. So thank you, friends. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for participating. That's wonderful. I started this channel because I knew like five or 10 women, like eight, I, I call them the great eight. I knew eight women who I wanted to share information with so that when they were ready to take a sabbatical, it would be in one place. So it's amazing that there are so many of us here. I'm so glad. Good vibes. My daughters, 23 and 18, and I are going to Mexico for two to three months to look for places to transition. Do you suggest a good place to start? Mexico has what you want. <laughs> so you just have to decide what your priorities are, right? Do you want beach? Do you want city? Mexico City is amazing. I've only been there for 24 hours, for less than 24 hours, but Rashida and Adelia both live there. Rashida's on the loose. Let me link to their, I, you know what? Let me give you, I have a whole playlist called Moving to Mexico. I tried to do some pre preparation, y'all. So I put together an entire Move to Mexico playlist, okay? So it's got Rashida's videos and Adelia's videos and a couple videos where they talked on my channel, right? <laughs> videos from their channel and then them on my channel. Okay, that's a really crazy link, but if you just click on the link in the chat, you'll see it. So move to Mexico. So Mexico has what you want. You just have to know what you want, right? Do you want desert? Do you want beach? Do you want mountain? Do you want city? Um, do you want a lake view? Do you want to be up on, a, on, up on a hill overlooking a town, right? Guanajuato is like a, a town that's built onto a hill and then there's like the valley, a hill and a valley. So the views are amazing, but there's no water there. Right. If you need to be near the beach or the lake, Guanajuato, there's no water. So you have to just figure out what you like. How many Americans and Canadians do you want to be around? That's a real thing, a real concern. I love going to Lake Chapala, Mexico, and my mom loves Lake Chapala, Mexico. It's very retirement retiree friendly, but Lake Chapala, Mexico is almost half Americans and Canadians, right? So do you want to be in a place full of Americans and Canadians? Uh, San Miguel and San Miguel, same, very retiree friendly, beautiful, just very picturesque, lots of Americans and Canadians. So the, the benefit of that is that people speak English, right? So you can get by if your Spanish skills are lacking in these places. But it also means you're just going to run into white people on a regular basis. If you have come to Mexico to get away from them, those are not the places for you. So where I would start, you ask where to start, I would start at that playlist. Start with the Move to Mexico playlist and find places that seem like they're interesting to you. And then check them out, get in groups. I will say 50 times in this video, find a Facebook group for the places you wanna go, find those Facebook groups and um, go. Get in those groups, ask your questions, listen, share. SFL Louis says yes, you do get door-to-door -door FedEx service. Okay, I wonder how long does it take, does, does, does the amount of time that they say it's gonna take, 
Is that right? Is that accurate? That's interesting. I don't, because I don't even see male. I've house sat for, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 different houses in Mexico and rarely do we even get mail. <laughs> like a lot of the people have either stopped their mail delivery, like that my house sit in December, the electric bill went to the landlord and then the landlord came to the house, the rental house and stuck the bill into the wire chain link fence. <laughs> That's how she gets her bills. The landlord sticks the bill, the bill into the fence and just pokes it into the fence. And then when she walks out, she sees it. It's there and she grabs it. <laughs> so. But that's her situation, right? Not everybody's situation. <laughs> okay, Teresa, I'm trying to travel to Mexico and South America and Africa and Europe for my year off. Am I trying to do too much? Yes. <laughs> well, I would say three regions. Mexico, which is north, okay, so we're talking North and South America. That's, they're kind of far apart though, Africa and Europe. Okay. It, just remember that travel days are long, exhausting, and not what you're into this for, right? You're probably into your sabbatical for rest and relaxation, not travel days. And those travel days are exhausting. Now, if you're talking about two cities in Mexico, for, so one, two, three, four. So if you're talking about two months in, it, like a month in, in Mexico City, and then a month in someplace in Brazil, and then a month, right? That's not, a, or two months or three months even, right? So with this agenda, you could do three months in Mexico City. You could do three months in Brazil, in um, one, one or two cities in Brazil, and three months in one or two cities in Africa, and three months in one or two cities in Europe. Okay, if you're talking that, go, go, good, go for it. If you're talking about you're going to travel all around Mexico and then all around South America, 8, 10, 15, 20 locations, all around Africa, all around Europe, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. It's exhausting and you're just not going to like it. You're, and you have to do a lot of pre-planning when you do something like that, I say leave yourself open, leave room for you to find a place that you fall in love with and just stay there, right? Leave room for a place where you don't like it and you go. You can leave the next day <laughs> or the next week, maybe you give it three or four days. So, Teresa, that sounds like you're doing too much. This is not the last trip of your life. I wanna say that. Even I fell into that, right? This is not your last trip ever. Right, this is a year, but not your last year, Lord willing. So don't treat it like it's your last trip, okay? Just treat it like it's a trip. Come up with something that you wanna do. If your theme is rest and relaxation, then make sure that your trip reflects rest and relaxation and not go, 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 go. I, but I usually would say for one year, three regions or three continents. Four continents is a lot. It's, there's a difference, but do what you want. <laughs> I would, I would, I would, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would either cross one out or just make sure that you're not traveling all around Mexico and all around Europe. You know, give yourself a couple of cities in each country. Thank you, nice shawl. Mel says, nice shawl, thank you. This is something I got in Guanajuato, Mexico. It's one of my very favorite items in the world. I love this, I love this shawl. <laughs> Hello, Miss Baby Girl. What is the best way to con contact me regarding a house sit? First, I have a whole house sitting playlist. You may not need to contact me. Let me find my playlist here. I have a whole house sitting playlist on YouTube with lots of information. You may find the answers to your questions right there in my house sitting playlist. It's really long. Again, playlist links are crazy. Um, if you do want to do a one on one call with me about house sitting, you can book a call with me at vicarious.com slash call me. 
okay? I do one-on-one -on -one calls where we can talk about house sitting, but seriously, see if those see if your questions are already answered. Now, I understand sometimes it's better to pay to talk to me than to watch 40 hours of video. I get it. I get it. But okay, those are the ways. Those are the ways. I did um I do I did a one-on-one -on -one call just yesterday about um well, I don't know. I shouldn't tell you. I have a hard time censoring things out, but that's probably something I shouldn't tell you. But yes, yes, you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me at bigharriuscom slash call me. All right. All right, I'm scrolling, y'all. I'm scrolling. Okay, we answered that. All right, I think I was around here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, I was past that. You know what, Jess? I don't even I don't even know, Justice. I don't even know if I've looked at her um Instagram. Because y'all know I'm, Instagram is not my thing. I DM'd her on Instagram. Uh, maybe I have. Maybe I have. Yes. Yeah, she is this is she is on a mission. She has found the thing, right? She has found a message that resonates. <laughs> I think we answered this, Lynetta, where do I start? St start with locations that sound interesting to you. I think we answered this, Lynetta. Was that, or was that someone else with the same, with a similar question? Start with, start with locations in Mexico that sound interesting to you. Check out some Airbnbs, then that work from, even though you're not talking about working from anywhere, in that work from anywhere toolkit, we have some Airbnb resources. Rashida also has a, um, an Airbnb, uh, like a, uh, on on Rashida's website, on Sheeta's on the loose, she has a resource on how to find the right Airbnb. Um, yeah, I would just I I like to start with location in Mexico. You were talking about very similar cost of living most places. Some places are a little more expensive, some places are a little less expensive, but pretty much it's all in the same cost of living bucket. So you don't really have to worry about some places being much more expensive. So then it's just like, what do I wanna do? Do I wanna do beach stuff? Do I wanna do city stuff, museum stuff? Um, yeah, find locations that sound interesting to you. Watch the Mexico playlist. Find cities that sound cool or, you know, sound like this is a place where I wanna go. And then get in some Facebook groups. This is number 44, 44th time I'm saying it. Get in, get in some Facebook groups for expats or for black women in that place and just poke around. Sometimes you'll find events happening. Right now with COVID, I don't know. I don't know about events. But some, you know, like in San Miguel de Allende, they have like writers workshops and you know, they have like festival time. And in Leon, there's like the Hot Air Balloon Festival. I think all of that stuff is pretty much canceled for, t for this year, but maybe not. Um, yeah, so start with the location, look around at Airbnbs, you know? Find a place where you want to, because I think for one to three months, you're probably just going to do Airbnbs. You're probably not going to deal with getting an actual apartment. Um, yeah, that's where you start. Where do I want to go? What's it going to cost? And what do what kind of accommodation can I get there? It's pretty simple. Because you get a six-month tourist visa, if you have a U.S. passport, you don't have to deal with any kind of like, how can I stay, you know, longer? You have up to six months, so you can just come in. You'll get a tourist visa at the airport or whatever. There's no prep for that. Nothing you need to prepare for that. Yeah, it's just finding, right? Friends, what am I missing? Just find, where do you want to go? And find some people there. Find a little community of, of people there so that, you know, you can get some small questions answered. Like what neighborhood, right? If I was coming to Mexico City, I would have no idea what neighborhoods would I like. I don't know. And so I would get in a Facebook group for expats in Mexico City or black, black people in Mexico City, and I would look around at what neighborhood information they've listed so that I would have that to go on. And then Airbnbs and VRBOs are really simple. Just find a place. <laughs> I'm in an Airbnb in La Paz. I've never once spoken to the, the person who owns this place or host, the host. I've never once spoken to the host. He's not even very communicative when I have a question. <laughs> he 
he's not. I've been here since January. I probably will be here through April, probably. Simple, it's simple. Do you have any regrets or miss family? I tend to get homesick. Um, the internet makes things really simple, really easy. So I talk to my parents on FaceTime, or not FaceTime, we do Facebook Messenger. My dad, even like, I talk to them so much that my dad will be like, huh? Ah. <laughs> my mom would be like, you wanna to talk to Stephanie? He'll be like, ah. <laughs> she said, last time I talked to him, she had, he was in the bed already. So she took, she was on her iPad. So she took the iPad into the, into the room and she was like, just call me when you're done. He said, just stay here. I'm already done. <laughs> He really does like me, I swear y'all, he does like me. So, no, my parents are healthy um, and my mom comes to visit me. My mom has been to Mexico twice to hang out with me. So no, uh, but home, so lonely, so lonely, I get lonely, but I don't get homesick if that makes sense. Um, so no, but but the internet, like it's 2021, the internet is amazing. You just, you can talk to whoever, wherever they are in the world, you can talk to them. You can see their face right then and there. And then you just, you have to find community where you are, where you're going, right? I told y'all the other day that I was, or I was, I think it was in the call for, um, the in the Exodus Summit Facebook call group call, I said that I was feeling lonely. And Rashida was like, well, did you find the expat group? in La Paz, and I said, well, I guess I'm not that lonely, right? <laughs> but that's the answer to find, there are people there, wherever you are, there are people like you there, right? Who you just form a community with, you just reach out to them. Queen in Lake Chapala, Mexico, I'm not kidding. I was walking out of a restaurant. I was in Lake Chapala for a house sit. I walked out of a restaurant. Queen and Nana were in a car. They, put, they saw at a red light, I don't know if it was even a red light. I think it might have been a green light. They stopped. They came over to me. They exchanged information. Immediately, we were Facebook friends. They were like, you don't even have a choice on this. I found you on Facebook, and we're now friends. And uh, they took me in. I have been to dinners at, dinners at restaurants. I have been to dinners in their homes. I have been to like meetups. I've been to stuff I don't even understand. <laughs> we went to like a metaphysics meetup. I don't know what that is. I went with them right? You just find the people like you where you're going. And you can find them before you get there. Facebook groups, I'm not kidding. Facebook groups, they are, they are, there are people already where you want to go. That really helps. So that's not home, right? So homesick will still be a thing. Homesickness will still be a thing, but you can counter it, right? You can work through the homesickness with your new community. And then you go home sometimes or you have them come visit you sometimes. All right. Tracy and Lynette. Okay, so that was two different people asking the same question. Okay, I thought the picture looked different. I'm like, the picture's different, but the question's the same. All right, y'all, become friends. <laughs> All right. I'm really far behind, but we're gonna get we're gonna get through. Oh, good lord, it's 9:15 already. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Uh, so we're not gonna get through all the questions, but some of them hopefully are repeats. Ah, Beverly. Okay, if you're retired, reti she's talking about getting permanent residency in Mexico. If you're retired and don't quite make the income requirements for Mexico, is that a deal breaker? As far as I know, that requirement is. That's a hard rule. Um, I don't. I haven't heard anyone say that they slid in under the under the limit. So if you're looking for permanent residency in Mexico, as far as I know, you need to hit that number. Temporary residency is less. The the, the income requirement is less for temporary residency, and you can renew temporary residency and then get permanent residency. I'm not sure how that transition works but maybe ask some people if they have started with temporary residency and how they were able to swing that into permanent residency. But as far as I know, the rule is that the money limit is the limit. And as far as I know, they're not going to be flexible with it. But again, 
also, not again, also, you can contact the consulate or the embassy in your, in your area, in your region, and find out. This is another thing that Facebook groups would help you with. If someone had been able to slide in under the limit, right, they will share that. They, they, someone will have said, I went to the consulate in New Orleans and not Houston, right? Or I went to Seattle and not, I don't know a city in Oregon. <laughs> I went to Seattle and they were fine with my income when this other city was not fine with my income. If that is something that can be bent, a rule that can be bent based on the location, a Facebook group will have that information. Yes, Adelia is Picky Girl Travels the World. Picky Girl Travels the World. She's on Instagram, she's on Facebook, she's on Twitter. She's on YouTube, she's on YouTube. So that link to the moving abroad, moving to Mexico, she's in this playlist, move to Mexico playlist. She's in this playlist, she just, um, not just, but kind of recently moved to Mexico City, so she's got good info on that. Wait, I put the wrong one on the screen, yeah. All right. I'm scrolling. Let's see. Aren't you supposed to not drink the water in some of these countries? So there's there's a water man. So in Mexico, in a lot of Mexico, no, you don't drink the water here. <laughs> there's a water man who comes by and he delivers water in a big, maybe 50 liter. Is that right? You know, those things that you put on a cooler. Yes, so they just deliver it in... Um, Lake Chapala, three of those were 75 pesos, which is $3, I don't know, $3, so a do maybe a dollar per jug, maybe, it was about around a dollar per for that big jug of water that you put on the cooler. Yeah, so they deliver water. Now, here in my particular Airbnb, I've missed the water man every time. I know he comes by every week, but I have missed him every week. So I just buy the thing at the grocery store and I think it's probably five liters, the five liter water thing. So yeah, that's it. And then I have done house sits in parts of Mexico with newer construction with built in water filtration systems. And there you just drink the water. But for the most part, water, no big deal. They don't drink the water out of the faucet but the water man just brings it to you. <laughs> he just brings it. He drives by on a truck, he's on a loudspeaker, he's, saying, he's announcing agua, agua, on a loudspeaker, if you need, and then sometimes he'll knock on every door, sometimes, depends on where you are. Here, I don't, either he doesn't knock on every door, or I just, I don't know, I've missed him every time. But yeah, no big deal. No big deal, the, the water thing is no big deal. It's nothing to get riled up about. Like, I can't go there, they don't drink the water. In a lot of Europe, you don't drink the water. Europe is old, right? <laughs> my, friend, my friend, when I worked in the pharmacy, my friend Arnisha went to Greece, and I was like, girl, how was Athens? She was like, old. <laughs> it's old. A lot of places you don't drink the water. I'm pretty sure I didn't drink the water in Barcelona out of the faucet. Yeah, it's, those places are old, you know? You don't drink that water. Them pipes, them pipes are old as, Molasses, I know, not old as molasses, that doesn't make sense. But yeah, in a lot of the world, you don't drink the water out of the faucet, but water's everywhere. You mentioned a self-check list. Yes. How do you determine what skills you have? You just write them down, right? You know what skills you have, you just write them down, right? So you know that you, are you a hair braider? Right? Can you, my skills inventory was basically, I, I'm a good writer, I can write. Um, so then I, that's how I started my virtual assistant business. I knew that there were a lot of people on the internet putting things out and I could do better. These blog posts and these email newsletters were not good. I can fix this for you, right? So do I, so I'm a, I'm a good writer. I, I'm a native English speaker, so I can tutor English online. Uh, I'm a pharmacy technician. That's not helpful for travel, but it's a skill that I have. I, you know, so you just list out your skills. What have you ever taught anyone? What have you ever, 
been able to help someone with? What would someone come to you for help with? Just list them out. And then you're going to find in there some money, some, in, some online money. You're going to find some online money in your skills, right? Maybe you're like, listen, my, I, I drive a truck. I drive the UPS truck. Listen, there are people who want to know that information. Is there a place where you can answer people's questions about how to get jobs on UPS? There is, I know, <laughs> right? There are platforms just designed for people to answer people's questions. I know this because my brother's a UPS driver and people always ask him, how do I get on with UPS? How do I get a job with UPS, right? So you find a platform where people get go to answer people's questions. That's a monetizable skill. So the, the thing that people ask you for help with, write those down on your checklist. Even things that you don't think are, are portable, right? Hair braiding is a portable skill, even though you don't think, some people don't think it is. You can just set up appointments. If you wanna travel to, like our girl here, if you wanna travel to four continents in one year, you can set up appointments with people in advance. I met an eyebrow doer, eyebrow woman. I met her in Australia. She was on Australia's version of Married at First Sight. Her name's Heidi. And I was like, hi. I met her in 2016 in a, rest, in a cafe. And I was like, what do you do? I don't know why I asked her that question, because that's not a question people ask outside of the United States. But it must have been, we must have been talking about her traveling. And I said, what do you do? And she said, eyebrows. <laughs> she traveled around Australia doing eyebrows. Right, you could travel around your place, wherever you want to go, braiding hair. So you just do you. The skills inventory is just you and a piece of paper writing out your skills. If someone here is a coach who has some sort of skills inventory step process or checklist, please share it. You can't drop a link, but raise your hand, let me know, and I can drop the link. Um, but it, a skills inventory is just you and a piece of paper and a pen and a pen, and you write out your skills, right? I know that I could, I can edit video decently. I can do a decent job of graphic design with basic programs. I can use Canva, um, you know, I can set up uh, landing pages for people. So I just made a skills inventory and then that's how I started my virtual assistant business. So that I, so that I could, go where I wanted, right? It's also how house sitter school happened. People always asked me about house sitting. So boom, I created house sitter school. Your skills inventory is just what can you do? MM, did anyone answer M's question about spiritual, a rainforest area in Mexico? I don't know. I know that there's Chiapas, which is kind of jungly, Chiapas, kind of jungle-like. I don't know anything about it, but maybe. <laughs> if there was, that's the place that I would look first. That's my suggestion. My suggestion. My suggestion. Chiapas. C H I A P A S. Oh, uh, Valerie. No, Deborah. Deborah Valerie. Is there a Facebook group for 60 plus expats? I have not seen one. This might be something for you to do, <laughs> you or someone who is here today, because I haven't seen it. But you're welcome to join Exodus, our Facebook group. Okay. Facebook.com slash groups. All right, you are welcome to join the Exodus Summit Facebook group which is facebook.com slash groups slash Exodus Summit. Actually, I have a quicker link than that. Uh, it's called Exodus. I don't know, it's not any shorter. ExodusSummit.com slash community should get you to our Facebook group as well. This is a group for black women, okay? We, every day we have to deny some people, um, but it's for black women. If you um, are interested in taking a sabbatical or if you're interested in planning a move abroad, that's what we talk about in this group. That's what we do. <laughs> we have women at various stages of planning. We have women who are already gone. We have women who have gone and come back. We have women who are waiting for retirement in two years. We have women who are leaving in two days, okay? <laughs> we have women who are going any place that you could think about. Um, and who are financing it in different ways, right? Some of us have 
um, online income, some are doing it on savings, some are doing it in a way that I'm so jealous of with alimony, <laughs> right? I'm so jealous of women with alimony payments. So <laughs> come over to exodussummit.com slash community. I'm pretty sure that link works. But in the, in, if you just go to Facebook and you look for Exodus Summit, you'll find our group, okay? We're there, welcome, welcome. Yes, Teresa says, Exodus Summit lit my fire for a sabbatical. Yes, we are, yes, we, listen, <laughs> we want you to do it, right? We are not just there to inspire you or we're not just there to show you, to be like, look at us, you know? Hey, I'm in La Paz, Mexico. I'm amazing, right? Hey, Rashida, Rashida's in Mexico City. That's amazing. No, that's not the point. The point is for you to do it. We want you to do it. If you want to do it, we want you to. So the, the group is there to help you make progress. The group is not there just about cheering other people on. The group is there for you to make your progress. So come over, join us. I keep knocking my earphones out. Come over and join us. Christine also would love to be down for a 60 plus group. Somebody raise your hand and start a group. Like, yeah, start a group. So, so Janelle and I are all, we're both in bodacious black women over 50. I'm not over 50. I don't think Janelle is over 50. <laughs> but we have snuck into that group. But that's not an expat group. It's not it's not particular to expat stuff. And there is I don't I don't I can't think of one and I am in a lot of Facebook groups. Uh, and I'm an advocate for joining and creating Facebook groups. And because I can't think of any, I don't think there's one. So do it. <laughs> join it, start it, somebody join it and can I email my pick? Oh, yeah. You're talking about the declutter picks? I think we're talking about a couple of different things here. Are we talking about the declutter picks? Yeah, email it. Email it. If you want to email your progress picture, you can do that. We have women, we have UK women, we have women in the Caribbean in the group. Yes. So most of the information is not country specific. Every now and then, like when we talk about getting residency visas and we talk about stuff that's passport specific, that stuff will be different. Some of it, even some of that is probably not that different. Uh, but for the most part, we're talking about stuff that it doesn't matter. If you speak English, we, it's in, it's this, the group is in English, right? As long as you speak English, you're going to get the good information from the group. All right, so Carrie says, keep her posted when you start the group. All right, but we haven't had anyone raise their hand to start the group. I'm not kidding, you can raise your hand right now. You can say in the chat, I will start a group for, for black expats over 60 or for expats over 60. Say it and we will find, do it, say it, do it and we will find you, uh, they will find you. Yes. Yeah, she, she, that's right. It's, that's right. <laughs> people, there are people who come and just take over, right? Men in particular, men will come and just take over a conversation. <laughs> when, <laughs> when we do have um, live, when we do have like a Zoom call, like some of the workshops where men, men were allowed in the workshops. And I was like, well, if he starts talking, we're just going to talk over him, right? Men will take over, white women and women of color who are not black women sometimes just want to take over the conversation and, and because they, things, history, the country, their whole life has taught them that that is how you treat black women. So we don't do that in our group. That's why some people are, cannot get into our group just because we don't have a way of telling if you're a black woman. If your Facebook profile pic is a bouquet of flowers, and your profile is private. We can't. We don't know that you're a black woman. You're not in the group, right? We're, so it's it it it, un, it's, it keeps some people out that we don't want to keep out. But we have to do it to keep the people out that we do want to keep out. You know. All right. I don't know. Y'all are replying to my mom, but I don't. I can't see what she said. Ecamm Live is funny about comments, so some stuff it won't show me. Janelle, have I ever had a medical emergency in Mexico? No. Um, 
but I house it for senior citizens <laughs> who go to doctors regularly here and have great get great treatment. Uh, but I have not. Um, but healthcare here is great. I've been in in the Lake. I keep talking like I'm in Lake Chapala. I'm not in Lake Chapala anymore. But in the Lake Chapala area, it's a medical tourism destination. People from the U.S. and Canada fly there to get healthcare. Right. Very good healthcare there. Very inexpensive healthcare there. Um, but I have not used any. I have not. I have not used any healthcare or like gotten any medical attention there. But people are happy with it. All right, what's the easiest and most cost-effective way to move your pets abroad? I'm going to send you to Adelia. Adelia's blog is Picky Girl. PickyGirlTravelsTheWorld.com. She has a she has information on that because she has moved with her little dog. If we're talking a carry-on sized pet, you know, the kind of pet that you can fly with up on the plane, up on, with you, she has information on that. She does not, as far as I know, she doesn't have information on moving with a pet that's bigger that you have to ship as cargo, which sounds really scary to me as a friend of, as a friend of dogs. Um, but pickygirltravelstheworld.com, I can't, I don't know the link to her exact post, but um, you'll find it. When you go on there, just search for with pets, travel with pets, and you'll find it. Yes. <laughs> Odea, I will happily join the group. I'm too busy decluttering and downsizing. Good, but I will participate. Good. Somebody's going to do it. Somebody step, stand up and say that you'll start the group and we'll, um, we'll, well, a, and everybody will know to join. I think that there's space. There is a space for it. How does moving abroad affect, impact your ability to collect social security benefits? I'm not the expert on this, but I believe from being a house sitter for oldsters, <laughs> US government doesn't care where you are. They don't care, okay? They don't care where you live. It's not like they're like, oh, she's moved to Mexico, cut off her social security. Oh, she's in Mauritius. I saw Mauritius in the chat. She's in Mauritius, cut off her social security. No, they don't care, okay? You just need to make sure that your bank is not going to give you any problems getting your money out of the ATM wherever you are and doing business where you are, right? There are banks that charge a 3% transaction fee on all transactions that take place out of the U.S. 3% foreign transaction fee is too much, especially when you're on Social Security and you want to make sure that you get every dollar. So the important thing is to make sure that your bank, right, your Social Security benefits are going into your bank. You want to make sure that your bank is not going to be the holdup. Okay, Social Security is not going to be the holdup. It's going to be, if there's a problem, it's going to be with your bank. So you want to make sure that you're banking with a bank that is not charging you foreign transaction fees. And you want to make sure that, they're, um, that you are going, to, are going to have no problem getting your money out in that country. But Social Security, the government don't care. Social Security does not care. Maybe in the meantime, in Exodus Summit, we will do some 60 and over get together until we can get a 60 and over separate group. Can you transport a car to Mexico and is it difficult to get the license? I don't know anything about getting a license in Mexico. I'm assuming it's not difficult. <laughs> That's not helpful. I don't think it's difficult. What is difficult is the registration costs. Registering a car from out of Mexico, in Mexico, is exorbitantly expensive. It is not recommended that you try to register your US car in Mexico. First of all, you have to be a resident to do it, so you have to have already done the residency process. You can't come on a tourist visa and then stay and then keep and then register your car there. You have to be a permanent resident. And you have to um, pay. I believe it's something like 20 or 30 percent of the value of the car to register the car. It's a lot of money. It's so much money that people don't do it. They just buy a car when they get there. There's cars in Mexico, right? <laughs> just buy a car when you get here. It's exorbitant. I've 
I know of more people who have taken their car back, driven their car back to the US, people in the Lake Chapala area, as opposed to trying to register it here. Just take it back, sell it, and then, you know. So I would, I would never ever recommend that you try to keep a car in, Me bring a car to Mexico and then register it. Just buy a car once you get here. The license can't be that hard, I don't know. I can't think of anyone who has talked about that. But I do hear them talking about the registration cost. All right, so some we had some questions about property, real estate in France and real estate in Ghana. And I think there were three. I'm sorry, I forgot the third question. Uh, Justice says she's found a Facebook group. You can share the name of the group, but Facebook, YouTube won't let you link. YouTube won't let you share a link. YouTube only lets me share a link. But put the name of that Facebook group, Jess, if you can. Justice, her, her name is not Jess. But <laughs> if you can, if you can share the name of that Facebook group, that would be helpful. Welcome, Lala. Moving abroad with her two sons and her husband. That's exciting. Do you guys have, let us know if you guys have a target date. Oh. Deborah, two countries where you cannot get social security. I didn't know that. And then she left us hanging. Deborah, <laughs> I didn't know that. Two countries where you cannot get social security. Oh, I wonder if they're countries with embargoes. Oh, let us know, let us know. I didn't know that. All right, I think we're talking about the background check for house sitting. Um. So it's not a, it's not like you get fingerprinted and they, it's not a background check in that way. It's just a documents check. So I don't think driving um, things, your driving record will come up. I don't think. I think they're just checking your documents. Is this passport a legitimate passport? Is this person the person who is supposed to be in possession of this passport? It's not like the get your fingerprints and background. It's not that kind of background check. It's more of a documents check. All right. Okay, Deborah Valerie says, I will start the group. Okay, Deborah, do you, mm, do you have an idea what you're gonna call it? So it's gonna take a few minutes for you to start the group. <laughs> But if you can tell us what it's called, I will tell, we will tell everyone today. If not, then just come back to the comments on this replay and share the name of your group in the comments. Abba, should I open a bank account in Mexico? You can, you don't have to. Uh, it depends on where you're going and which banks are, are, like which banks are the big banks there, but you don't have to. Right, because <laughs> uh, you can just use the bank, use the ATM. It depends on if you need business, if you have stuff that you need to do in a bank, right? If you're just talking about taking money out of an ATM, you don't need to. Because uh, I doubt that Adelia and Rashida have Mexican bank accounts and they live in Mexico City. Yeah, as long as you know that your bank is on a network where you can use the ATM with no problem, that's, it's, you don't need it. <laughs> Yoga, do I cover information on moving to Canada? No, Canada is too expensive for my blood. I do not. <laughs> And I don't know anyone who talks about that, right? So I know I could name, I, for a lot of countries, I could point you to someone. But I don't know anyone, especially the West Coast. No, but I'm gonna keep my eyes open for you. Uh, but no, because it's uh, like, it, Canada is not on my list. Canada's, ugh, I'm a budget when I say, <laughs> I like budget destinations, I mean it. House hunters alone will have me like, mm -mm, never Canada. <laughs> Between the expensive, prices and the fact that you have to have winter time. There's no part of Canada where you can escape winter time. Canada is not the move for me. So I don't, but if I know someone, um, 
If I knew someone, I would tell you, but I don't know of anyone who talks about that. Okay, all right. So TA4A says she's gonna start a group for over 70s. She's gonna start a community for over 70s. She is looking, it's no, she's a snowbird looking to come, down, I guess to Mexico from January to April. Great, so by the time some of you were watching the replay, some of these groups will already be in existence. So if you go to Facebook, you'll find them. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Adelia says Cuba and North Korea, you can't get, <laughs> and then Deborah says Vietnam and Pakistan. I don't know about Vietnam because there are quite a few American um, retirees. V Vietnam is a popular place with American retirees. I could, I can totally see Cuba and North Korea because of the whatever embargo or I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know that kind of stuff, but I think I can see that. That makes sense. All right, so here's another business opportunity for someone, a summit on medical tourism. Ooh, I follow one woman on Twitter who talks medical tourism, but not too many, not too much info. But this, there's a, there's a, there's a space for this. There's an opening for this. If this is someone's interest or passion, you don't have to be the expert. So Isan One, this might be your thing, right? Because you don't have to be the expert to do things. You're just gonna bring in the experts. Right? You are the person with the questions. When you run a summit, you don't have to be the expert if you're the person with the questions who can bring in experts. Uh, so this might be, a, this is a good idea. So my, so I say this all the time. I don't think I have to keep it a secret. My mom had dental work done in Mexico, right? Had, she had a partial dental, partial denture done in Mexico for I'm believing one tenth of what they were gonna charge her in the US. Her money conversion skills are lacking, y'all. So when she, she told me she paid $250, I'm gonna guess she paid $500 because <laughs> Connie Perry could not convert dollars to pesos for anything. So I'm gonna guess, she's told me, I think she told me she paid $250 for partial denture. I, I think she probably, it was probably $500 for the partial denture. Uh, but it was one tenth of what they were, she was gonna be charged in the US. Medical, tour, medical tourism is a real thing because a lot of the world has good health care for pennies on the dollar compared to the United States. We get told that the United States is the greatest and the greatest in all of these things. But once you go a, around, you find that not in health care, <laughs> not in transportation, like two hours in Japan and you will be like, the United States is 50 years behind. Japan is so advanced. The trains are so fast. Why does it take me so long to get from LA to San Francisco? If I was in Japan, I could cover this distance in an hour, right? So, so yes, I'm getting off on the going off on a tangent. But yes to uh, more information for Black women for, on medical tourism. If you know someone who would like to come on my channel and talk about medical tourism, have her come on, whatever she wants to talk about. I have made no, no, no secret of the fact that I wanna to go to Poland and get my eyelids done. <laughs> By saying, when I say I want to go to Poland to get my eyelids done, I'm saying I will go to Poland to get my eyelids done. Well, as soon as I feel comfortable with someone touching my face, COVID is not COVID anymore. That will be the half, that will be happening. So yes, for medical tourism, you don't have to either suffer through it or pay U.S. prices. I watched an episode of Monk, was it Monk? Just the other, just the other day. Um, and the mom, the kid had never been to the dentist. No, it wasn't, it was that Chicago medicine or whatever. Kid had never been to the dentist in his life because of the price. And in the comments, the people were like, what? <laughs> like, dentists aren't free where you live, right? <laughs> people in the UK, people in Sweden, like, Y'all pay for the dentist and you pay that much that people don't go, right? I'm telling you, healthcare is not the same in other places. So I love that idea. I would be there at that summit or that talk. Do it. <laughs> Isan one, do it. You or someone you know or someone else, someone here, do it. All right.
Do you, okay, do you use cash and American credit cards? Do you convert all your cash? Never ever convert money. Just pull it out of the ATM. Whatever country you're in, your money is in the bank in the US. You pull the currency of the country you're in out of the ATM. That's the cheapest way. When you have cash, when you have US dollars and you try to convert those US dollars in cash into pesos, rand, euros, reals, reais, um, you're gonna pay. There's a charge for that. <laughs> There's extra, extra charges for that. Just pull it out of the ATM. If you need cash, just pull it out of the ATM. A lot of stuff, a lot of people are paying their rent even in online, right? right? Like you don't even have to pay your landlord with money. You just pay your, you just transfer the money to your landlord online. So no to converting cash. Um, yes to you, I use my American credit cards. I have USAA and USAA does not charge foreign transaction fees. Don't forget to look at your bank and find out if they're charging you foreign transaction fees. You may need a new bank. And again, that Work From Anywhere Toolkit has a link to at least two banks. Charles Schwab is very popular with American Americans abroad and Chime. Two at least two banks where you're not going to be charged a foreign transaction fee and you're going to be able to access your money from another country through their ATM. There is, a, so ATMs do charge ATM fees, yes. Now, USAA, Re refunds my fees. I think fifteen or twenty dollars a month. USAA refunds my ATM fees. Yes. So anywhere they so yes they do charge ATM fees still. Just like just like here, uh, your bank may refund those fees and your bank may not. Yeah, I'm so mad that I didn't get glasses last time I was in Mexico before COVID because I just don't want to be in some. I don't want anybody in my face. I need to get glasses like ASAP. <laughs> I need glasses yesterday, but I don't want anybody in my face. So I wish that I had gotten my glasses last time. I'm going to get glasses here, but I'm upset that I didn't do it last time. Yeah, it's a thing. It's real. Um, yeah, we need to talk. It's something that we need to talk about. Chase Sapphire, no foreign transaction fees. Thank you. Thanks so much, Annette. You're, you're a new face. Welcome. Baby Ethernet, hi. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm full of helpful information. <laughs> and Adelia, Fidelity doesn't charge and they rebate ATM fees. All right. So we need so we need to get ourselves away from Bank of America. That's, this is a bank that I know for a fact is charging you foreign transaction fees. Right. Get away from Bank of America. Get yourself on into a bank that is not going to charge you 3% of your money just to get your money. Right, 3% foreign transaction fee on every transaction is bonkers. <clears throat> yes, Deborah, at the ATM, don't accept the machine's offer to convert. Decline that, yes. When they say, do you, so here in Mexico, they do that. I don't know if it's everywhere, probably everywhere, right? So I'm using my US ATM card in a machine in Mexico. It says, do you wanna convert this money? I say, nope, no, I do not wanna convert because they're not gonna use the conversion rate that's favorable to me. They're gonna use the conversion rate that's favor favorable to them. So no, don't convert. I just want, just give me my pesos and let, let, let the right conversion figure it out. I don't know, that doesn't make sense, but yes. Also, no to converting. I don't, not right now. It's just not the time. It's just not the time to have people in your face, right? COVID is, you know, I don't, I don't. I do, I feel like, so I have a little eye makeup on right now so you can't see, but I feel like my eyelids are the thing that give away. <laughs> I'm not unhappy with aging. I'm glad to be aging because there's only one other choice. So I'm glad to be aging. However, <laughs> I do feel like my eyelids are giving away the secret that I'm not 33. <laughs> All I want is to look 33 again. And I feel like if I got a little eyelid surgery uh, to de-wrinkleify my upper eyelids, <laughs> y'all, whatever, don't judge me. <laughs> That's my thing, right? I have a big nose. I like my big nose. 
I have other things that people would be like, you need to work on that first, right? I don't have eyebrows, I have to draw on my eyebrows, but that's not the thing that worries me, right? My nose, I'm good with my nose. My chin is awkward, it's crooked. I'm good with my crooked chin. I really want my eyelids done, I really do. <laughs> Thank you, Em, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, okay, we're hitting up, we're hitting on two hours, okay? Okay, thank you, Isan. Yes, this is something that we should happen. Not partner with, partner with you, okay, good. I wanna make sure you didn't say partner with me. Great, do it. Come back, tell us, okay? Because it's, it's a thing that is real, it's a thing that people from all over the world are doing, and black women are like, wait, really? I can get this done for this amount of money in another place and have it done well, yeah. Okay, and then Joy is, okay, so Joy, I'm gonna look this person up. Thank you, Joy. Joy has listed a black tax expert. Thank you. I'm gonna look this person up after the, after we're done. Volume in my boobs. <laughs> all over, all over. We're gonna get it, we're gonna get some information. <laughs> we're gonna get some information on that. Um, all because they there's some there is a place that specializes in this right there is a place so medical tourism is kind of funny in that there there are countries that and cities even that specialize in certain things so right the the island thing is a Poland thing I don't know why Europe um, Asians so Asians get um, sometimes Asian people get an eyelid surgery to more westernize their the look of their eyes. That's the basic, basically the same surgery that I want, just to de-wrinkleify my eyelids. And uh, for some reason, that's something that Poland has specialized in. So there are some specialized regions that do a certain thing, and they're known for a certain thing. They don't call it the Brazilian butt lift for nothing, right? That is something that Brazil has put a stake in the ground and said, we do this thing. So yeah, but there are any kind, any not only not only cosmetic surgeries, right? My mom met a man who had a spine fusion done in Mexico or something, and he was walking in the store the next day. We were in a store, and he's walking around. He had said, "I came down here to get my spine fused or whatever." So not only cosmetic surgery, there are things that we need and we just can't afford in the U.S. Right? Not just a beach house. <laughs> Not only can I get a beach house in Mexico that I can't afford in the U.S., I can also get some new islands. All right. <laughs> most needed things, yes. Especially the most needed things to bring with you from the U.S. when you're moving abroad. Number one is a bra, yes. I, where I'm a size 18. Under undergarments in general, I'm not gonna get them where I'm going. <laughs> Especially when I went to um, Southeast Asia, I went. To, I spent a year in Southeast Asia. Never ever, never once did I see any panties in any store that were gonna work for me. <laughs> oh, so undergarments are yes. There's not too much other stuff, honestly. I'm really light on hair products, so I wouldn't worry too much about hair stuff but on undergarments and then other clothes you can just get it made like seriously if you're in a place where everybody is small and they don't have big girl clothes or if you're in a place where everybody is short and they don't have tall person clothes you can probably just get them made like hand in made for you on a budget like for good money so yes undergarments probably pack pack more than you think right that's the only thing that i would say Bring more, <laughs> bring more, um, because I was I've been in the Philippines. I have I, in a, look looking in a store and like this is pointless, right? <laughs> this is pointless. I am not gonna be able to find no bra in the Philippines, no panties in the Philippines. This is not gonna happen. So undergarments, bring them. I don't know about stuff. Yes, same with socks. I'm having that same thing here in Mexico. I wear a size 10 women, 10 women, 10 women's shoe, US size, which to me seems like a regular size, but apparently I am the Jolly Green Giant in Mexico. <laughs> so socks, add socks to the undergarment list. Yes, bring them. You don't expect to get them, find them, unless you are the size of the people in the place that you're going. Don't expect to find what, you're, what you need. 
yes to that. That's an important question. <laughs> what do you need to bring? Bring underwear. <laughs> bring bras, bring panties, bring socks. All right. Okay, so I feel like there are lots of questions I didn't get to. I'm sorry, but it's too, it's been two hours, y'all. I got to go. I got to go. I, I have only, um, I have only had some water. My throat is not <laughs> sounding the best. So I got to go. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to follow up with information, please, friends. If you come, if you are one of the people who is doing something that we need to follow up with, please come back to the comments and leave a link, okay? So if you are running or if you're starting a group for women over 60, come back into the comments of this video and leave a link to that. If you are starting a, uh, if you're gonna do some work on uh, medical tourism, right? If you're gonna run a summit or if you're gonna do some videos on your channel about medical tourism, come back, leave some links in the comments here so that we will know. You can email me, stephanie at vicarious.com if you want to make sure just like i put um tasha's link to her lead to her um declutter kit i put the link to tasha's declutter starter kit on my channel community page i can do that for for you guys v-a-y-c-a-r-e-o-u-i-o-u-s.com so email me if you if you're one of the persons <laughs> who is leaving this live stream with homework please email me your homework <laughs> okay <laughs> okay next week we're talking to mayor meets world mayor's another mayor's a younger woman a younger black woman who's done some traveling next week we're talking about decluttering some fears so today we had just regular questions tomorrow we're gonna uh, next week we're gonna talk about fears i said she was gonna be this week but i was wrong she's next week so next week we're going to talk about travel fear she has really good videos on her travels in morocco and some other places some places that have been not quite as friendly to black women at times so we're going to talk about some fears next week and some good stuff not only fear we're going to just talk mayor's fun so we're just going to talk she's fun uh so that'll be next saturday 10 a.m eastern uh so that will be volume three of our decluttering um month our month of of decluttering and i'm going to link to tasha's decluttering starter kit one more time go to toshpatterson.com slash declutter kit to get tasha's declutter starter kit so that uh you can get started decluttering she talked about the different forms of clutter we're not just talking about physical clutter she talked about digital clutter which really upset me to my heart because that is my struggle. Um, she talked about emotional clutter. I got my notes here, but she talked, yeah. So she talked about the different types of clutter. We're not only talking about like the physical, your closet, okay? So get her declutter starter kit and um, keep us posted on your progress. Okay, okay. All right. Thank you for joining again, as always. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for participating. This has been great. I'm sorry. I just saw the comment and then I clicked off. It has been great, hasn't it? <laughs> I love spending my Saturday mornings with you guys. So thank you for coming in and for sharing with each other. I can't carry, I can't answer every question. I can't carry the load. So thank you for sharing and for being good to one another in here. Her name is Tosh Patterson. So thank you for taking care of one another in the group so that we can, um, live our dreams y'all ah, we're living our dreams aren't we <laughs> all right until next saturday i'll see you around if you're in the exodus summit facebook group i'll see you there uh if not i'll, I'll just see you around have a wonderful weekend and uh happy march okay bye <laughs>